Welcome back, folks. You know my next guest from Sons of Anarchy and Mad Men. Now she stars in Showtime's Billions. If you knew enough to make an appointment under an assumed name, you knew I didn't want to see you. I knew you wouldn't, but that's not the same as not wanting to. Yes, it is. There's this thing that happens when we're in a room together. It always has, Bobby. It just flows like this. But I'm shutting it off. I have shut it off. Okay. First, I apologized. But if it takes me sending you flowers every day, Joe DiMaggio style, to prove it, I will. He did that after Marilyn was dead. Yours would have the same effect on me that his had on her. Please welcome Maggie Siff. Thanks for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure. Now, the first time uh, we met... I won't met... kiss you. What? I won't kiss you. Well, more's the pity. Um, <laughs> um, the first time we met was at the Christmas party at oh. CBS uh, just this past Christmas. That's right. And I, I kind of embarrassed myself a little bit because uh, I, we said hi, and you said I'm in billions, and I said, oh, I actually haven't uh, watched it <laughs> because I tried to watch the first one, and I put in the little DVD to watch it that right. they gave me when Giamatti was on, and the very first scene is him hogtied on the floor, and a dominatrix comes in and puts her boot on his chest, and I turned it off because I was watching it with my children. <laughs> right. And you said? Yeah, that was me. <laughs> well, it revealed something about Paul Giamatti, because he told me that in that scene, that very first scene where he's the tied up on the floor and yeah. you're putting your boot on his chest, that he fell asleep. <laughs> When you guys were shooting that scene. I know. Were you insulted in any way? No, I was fascinated. I mean, I learn from him every day. Really? Yes. And well, what like... kind of rough stuff is Giamatti into if he can fall asleep I during think... a scene about uh, s and &M? I think it was just such a novel experience for him. Uh -huh. He, like, surrendered 100%. Uh-huh. And, you know, it was our first day shooting together ever. What? Seriously? Seriously. The tie you up uh, the boot tie on you your up, chest is the your very chest, first scene. Stub the cigarette out on your chest. Yeah, so I was awake for both of us. <laughs> I was like, I was double awake. I was like, okay, you mm -hmm. just relax, mm -hmm. and I will try not to kill you with my stiletto and mm -hmm. my dangling cigarette because you're, you know, a national treasure. Mm -hmm. and, is. and my is. coworker and a wonderful human being. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't do it without somebody like him. You know, yeah. he's so uh, brave and yeah. he's so curious. You know, it's like he'd never done anything like that before. And he's like, that's fascinating. Huh? You know, like, let's go. <laughs> I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's do this thing. So, okay, so how, but how do you prepare for that role? Like, do you do a ride along? How do you. <laughs> I'm just, I'm kind of curious, because you want to get it right. You want to get it right, yeah, you I do. assume. I, I talked to some people who are, are in that world, and we people actually... People in the lifestyle? People in the lifestyle, yes. Mm -hmm. And we, we actually we do... It. That's what we call it. That's we call it the you... lifestyle. Oh. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You should come down sometime. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a consultant on set. Some. Uh, uh, you sometimes. have a, a, a dominatrix consultant on set? We do. We have a dominatrix consultant. Wow. No, not not so of, much. Hold on, can we get one of those? Is that in the budget? We got one of those. We got one of those. Okay. I think you need one. We're doing. Oh yeah, uh, sure, yeah. Sure. I think just you never know. The little that I've you seen. Know. So I think what does she do? He or she, I assume. She, um, she. Well, she had conversations with us about sort of the lifestyle and some of the psychology of the characters, which is what I was interested in. But sure. also in the scenes that are a little bit more explicit, which. For the most part, I'm not a part of, like when they go into clubs or yeah. things like that. There's machinery involved, what? things like that. Yeah, I don't know how much. You wow, want. you also it's... have a mechanic on set. <laughs> <laughs> well, she kind of takes care of all of that. She's the mechanic, okay. dominatrix. All right. Like, yeah. So what does this person say? Nah, nah, that's not how. That wouldn't be right. <laughs> really? Do they go? Does she, does she give you advice? Like, nah, don't do it that way. That's not the. Uh, you know, like honestly, for my part. Um, because the characters are, it's sort of a facet of their marriage and they're not, they're not professional, you know, dom sub type. So they're kind of just figuring it out as they go along. So I just talked to her about psychology. I just oh, okay. talked to her about right. like, yeah. you know, how. This is a hobby. 
it's a hobby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a hobbyist's questions. Now, the movie is about, like, I mean, the, the series is about people who are dealing with billions of dollars, and there's, like, there's race cars, and there's mansions, and, like, do you flip through the script and say, what fun thing, what toys do I get to play with this week? I would be the worst billionaire on the planet. Like, I could care. No, no, Donald <laughs> Trump is the worst billionaire on the planet. <laughs> that is already taken. You're right. You're right. Okay? So you don't, I, like, to play, you don't like to play with the, the, the toys or anything like I that? I wouldn't be a mendacious billionaire. Yeah? Or a malignant, narcissistic billionaire. Uh -huh. I think I would, like, give my billions away. I don't know how to really spend money, and I don't have a very glamorous lifestyle. I'm, but I'm the to, mother of to, a toddler. <laughs> you're the mother of a toddler? Yeah, so, wow. like, I split my life between putting on these clothes and being this, like, high-powered, you know, superwoman, and then I go home, and I'm covered in, you know, marker and vomit and puke and stuff like that. And that, Like, that is my life, right? Uh-huh, uh -huh. Do you have a consultant for that, too? Somebody says, yes, <laughs> that's how you do it. Now, uh, you play, you played a lot of strong female characters, Sons of Anarchy, Mad Men. You said that playing women can sometimes be a political act. What does that mean? You know, I like, I go back and forth between sort of denigrating myself as a performer, because you're like, oh, I'm just a, I'm an entertainer. Like, what does that mean? But then I, I worked with a filmmaker recently who, who said, you know, when you are on screen and you're representing women, like, it's almost like a time capsule. It gets shipped out into culture and through time, and, like, who you are and how you stand up into those roles is actually really significant. And I, you know, I take that in. And so I think, I, you know, I've gotten to play some characters who are very... That's a lot of pressure to put on yourself. It is a lot of pressure to put on myself. And I don't, for the most part, but when I step back and think about it, I'm like, in, in a way, it can be a political act. You know, to, to play a character, even on a, a show like Sons of Anarchy, which is so sort of macho, but to be somebody who, like, stands up and has, you know, um, can string a lot of sentences together and has clear thoughts and, um, you know, can be cerebral sometimes and fierce sometimes and powerful sometimes, like, I I'll take it. Like, I think that can be significant and somewhat political. Well, you know. good luck with the time, Jeff. I well, have nothing to do with it. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you do. Well, season two of Billions premieres this Sunday on Showtime. Maggie Siff, everybody. We'll be right back. <laughs> 